We're going to get going here in a little bit, guys. Just give me some time. We're going to let some people get in here. We're going to talk about all this matching up garbage. And eh, it's not really garbage. It's uh, it's important I'm trying to figure it all out. I actually just posted a video. So if you want to get freshed up on what we're going to talk about, go watch that new video on the LTC channel, on the JR Rimmon channel. Just posted that video. It's available, up and ready, about 15 minutes long if you want to watch that. And then come on back, ask your questions. We will chat, but make sure to hit that uh, that link at www.10pindoctors.com. See the benefits of it, 10% off your clinics. A free virtual clinic every month. You get 10% off at the merch store and the, the shopping store. You get to be uh, in the forum where we're going to talk a lot about a lot of different things. You're going to get access to all the tutorial videos that are going to be put up there. And then you're eligible to win prizes, bowling balls and all that good stuff every month. So make sure to join that. I know $9.99 sounds like a bunch, but considering what you pay for TV and internet and the value you're gonna get out of this compared to that stuff, whoo, well, maybe not internet, because internet's important. But the value you'll get for bowling itself, it's gonna be pretty awesome here. So give me about seven minutes and we'll get ready to rock and roll here pretty soon. Don't mind my treadmill in the back, by the way. Morning, good morning. We're just waiting a little bit. We're waiting for people to get on. We're giving people a chance. I know it's the middle of the day. That's okay. We're still going to talk about this, and this will be available for later. It'll be uploaded. People will be able to watch it. Good morning, good morning. Muskegon, good luck at that Muskegon tournament. Andreas, I start with whichever ball strikes. That's what we're going to chat about today. It's striking balls. But y'all make sure to join that membership at 10pindoctors.com. Very, very important. If you care about bowling, if you want to get better at bowling, that membership is very important. For 10 bucks a month. I'm actually probably going to add 
uh, a section to where you're going to get discounted bowling balls as well. So stay tuned for that. Powered by Bowler X. Blind Larry, this isn't uh, this one's not the app. This is actually just a membership through a website. So yeah, if your phone has dark mode set up on it already, if your computer has dark mode set up already, then uh, you'll be able to see everything just fine. But this is just uh, through the through my website right now. The actual app that I've been talking about will probably be released before next season in the fall. I'm gonna have some demos and stuff coming here pretty soon. I'll show you guys what it's all about. But it's going to be pretty awesome. Bry guy, I'll explain why that headline is true. But I bet you it's not for the reasons you think. That's a good question there, Joseph. It's probably, I probably should add like a discount for paying a year up front, make it like a hundred bucks for the year instead of the 120. I'll add that. I will, I'll add that. Teach someone that's blind. I mean, there's a lot of people that are bowling and they're blind and stuff. So, yeah, I think that's an option. off the screen for you so we can see what the heck's going on you can see my pretty face what's happening y'all how we doing make sure to hit those uh like buttons hit the thumbs up for me kind of help the algorithm a little bit make sure if you're not a subscriber you are you do hit that subscribe button and comment with uh all your questions everything you've got out there as far as what it is for matching up now for those of you that uh haven't seen already we're gonna watch that uh, or you, you need to go watch the matching up video that I just posted um, matching up is a 
it's a hard thing to do. It's not easy to figure out which ball to use, what rotation to use, you know, what tilt to use, even though tilt is very difficult to change, um, which part of the lane to play, those types of things. You know, the idea behind matching up is always to find, yes, it's about finding a ball that gives you the most miss room, but it's also about finding the ball that when you do miss is still going to go through the pins. That's the hard part. Um, and I think that's, that's really what it comes down to when it gets, when we get to like the PBA events and stuff like that. Um, but it's, uh, it's still obviously doable. You got guys that are out there constantly making it happen. You got EJ Tackett and Belmo that find a way, Simo, you know, these guys that are always figuring out a way to get their ball to do the right thing. And I think what people are confused by, you know, yes, they all are very, very, very good. Um, what in the heck is elbow cough? What's that mean? Why are you coughing in your elbow? That's weird. So <laughs> um, they are very, very good. But uh, where we need to look is kind of, I'm trying to say this as delicately as I can without getting in trouble. There are types of conditions that favor certain styles. And that's not to say that, that there's anything weird going on. But there are types of conditions that uh, allow certain styles to match up easier, we should say. It's easier to match up on certain types of shaped patterns because there are tapers. There's taper in certain patterns. And the way the patterns are, are made and designed can benefit specific people. Now, this would be why you see... Uh, in a lot of cases, you see stuff like the U.S. Open. Now, EJ this year seems to be the anomaly. But you see people uh, who are having a lot of success on normal PBA events not do so well at USBC events because they use the Kegel machine with different oils. Uh, Kegel machines can oil front and back. The Brunswick machines oil only oil on the way forward. Uh, they don't oil on the way back. So that can create some difficulty in the way they taper the patterns, the way they create the patterns. For some reason, when it comes to the Brunswick machines and what we bowl on on the tour stuff, they, uh, the way they taper them, the way they oil the patterns, uh, it almost seems like there's always a speed ramp down lane. It's like your ball tries to get going early and then it gets to a certain part of the lane and it speeds up. And because of that, the higher rev type players uh, I don't want to say they're benefited, but it makes it a little bit easier to, to, to manage that because you can use your rev rate and ball roll to get the ball to start up soon enough, um, but not have to use a ton of surface. So you, you see guys like EJ using the Venom lines an awful lot, using the shock on pretty much anything, the Primal shock, the Venom shock, you know, the new Black Venom. Uh, which is very, very good, by the way. If you haven't seen that review on the BowlerX.com channel, you need to go watch that review. But um, they're able to get the ball to read the middle of the lane and still use uh, a less surface to get it to read the middle of the lane because of their rev rate. Whereas the guys who have a little bit less rev rate uh, in rotation – they have to use more surface, which means they then have to be softer at the bottom of the swing. They can't hit up on it. Otherwise, it hooks early because they're a little bit slower. Because if they speed their ball speed up, uh, they shoot it right past. They get it going past the pattern, and then it, it's behind the head pin every time. And that's where a lot of over-under comes from. So the idea is to use um, as little surface as you can to be able to clear the fronts but enough surface on your bowling balls. And for those of you that are new to bowling and stuff, surface meaning the type of uh, dullness you're putting on the ball, whether it's a, a higher grit or a lower grit, the higher the grit, generally the cleaner, uh, the more tight knit those uh, scratches on the ball are going to be. The lower the grit, the more surface it's going to have, the more spread out the scratches are going to be, the deeper the scratches are going to be, which is going to create more friction, more early hook. So um, no, no, these patterns are not, made to favor certain players it's just the way it seems to work out sometimes i'm not i'm not saying they do this on purpose i'm saying that i think the machines that they use and this is just my opinion i don't know if it's true or not i'm just going based on best knowledge and what i've seen um and the way the lanes are oiled that's how these things 
uh, end up is because it gives you the illusion. It makes it feel the Brunswick machines make it feel like there's a speed bump down lane to where your ball speeds up at a certain spot. If your ball doesn't hook before it, um, whereas the Kegel machines, I feel like the taper is more blended and you have the ability to get your ball to slow down a little bit easier. Again, I'm trying to explain this slow down means, um, to change direction, to start making its motion sooner to not be so fast, not be skidding so fast, basically. Um, the, uh, so the higher rev players definitely have the advantage of being able to get the ball to read that spot before all of that hang down lane. Now, just think of now throwing all these purple hammers and pitch blacks into the mix where everybody's starting a little straighter playing up the lane with these bowling balls. So they're taking all that oil out of the front and moving a bunch of it down lane to create an even more drastic speed bump. Um, and then because as people go left, they have um, that hang that was at like five, six on these flatter patterns it's now more pronounced to where it's like from five to about eight because now they've been using the urethane in that area, which is now moving it down there more. So you either have to get the ball to read before that and continue through it. So when it hits that spot, it's already rolling. It's already going towards the pocket and you don't have to worry about it shooting past and sh shooting into that, that mess that's out there, or you have to play left of it. And if you're playing left of it, it's the same thing. You kind of have to either shut your angle down and use a weak ball that just gets it to tip. Usually not a good idea. It doesn't really work out on those patterns too much. Or you have to open your angle wide open and throw it at that early friction, that hook, to get it to come around and shape up earlier. That's why you see the guys start straight with urethane and they're going up the lane usually, or even with the guys with the purple hammers can kind of go a little bit further left and go around it just a little bit more. And usually the purple hammers are staying in play a little bit longer because of that ball's ability to keep going through the pins. It's a really, really good bowling ball for doing those types of things. That's why I just drilled a second one. I drilled a weaker one. So that way I have one that I can go straighter with and one that can go around the lane when I need to. Um, and I'm also going to be drilling a bunch of pin down stuff this week. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to be showing you the results of what I'm looking at. But uh, then once you're done playing straighter on these patterns, and they kind of start to force you to go left, but now you're seeing your ball hang because of the urethane, that's when guys make the jump and they leap. They skip the entire middle of the lane and they just go dead left and they throw it at that early hook spot to the right. So they get it to stand up off of it and really roll off of it. So you never, so you take all that hang down lane out of play. Um, and a lot of the times these patterns, they get to the point of, if you don't get it there, if you don't throw it right, your ball's not hooking. If you actually miss left, it, it's such a pronounced cliff where there's so much oil that's sitting in the middle now. And that dry spot is so pronounced to the right that you're so steep. If you don't get it going to the right, your ball sits in that oil and it hangs. And that's why you see those two tens, the two eight tens, the washouts and stuff like that. When it looks like they missed left off their hand. And then if they miss right and they get it over there too fast. Now it hits that dry and it just stands right up and it's big four, kind of like on a house shot. You see a lot of that stuff on the house shot. And the reason they get like that is because of how good these guys are, because of how accurate, how consistent, and the knowledge to be able to, to play the parts of the lane and break them down the way that they do. And that's a lot of the reason why you see scores are a little bit higher than usual or a little bit higher out there than if you were to take a bunch of amateurs uh, or like, like let's take uh, like Brian Regan in Michigan. Um, he runs a bunch of tournaments and we were talking about this the other day, uh, how a lot of his patterns, they just get so beat up and so nasty. And that's why guys like Justin Knowles run away with it is because he doesn't have to worry about anybody destroying the middle of the lane or destroying the pattern by having people all over the place. He's one of the lone lefties. There's only a couple of them out there. Um, so he does very, very well in those events because he doesn't have to deal with that, but, and, and he's really good, you know, he's a good bowler. So that helps too, but with his patterns and stuff, they, he makes them tough. And a lot of these guys, they just, they, that's what happens. They got some people playing in, you got some people playing out. So there never becomes a real defined place to play the lanes. It's just basically everybody trying to play their comfort zone and whatever works, works at the time. And that makes it difficult. And that's why the scores are always low. Uh, in his events, almost always low. 
you go out and you put that same pattern out for the PVA guys, scores aren't going to be so low. That's why you see a lot of these cuts are 220, 225 plus to make these cuts is because they're so good at playing straighter or breaking them down in specific areas, creating hook spots, creating, um, you know, the right types of shapes that, and then they just jump left and use that to their advantage. Um, it, it usually goes one way or the other on those patterns. It usually is either they score really high to start and then they kind of fizzle off towards the end because they get weird or they score kind of moderately to start and then they just bang on them and score really high to finish the events. Um, and, you know, it, it goes one way or the other. And there's definitely different players that can create that. So matching up is is important out there because it always gets to a point, almost always gets to a point where, yeah, we can all get to the pocket, you know, or when they're super hard, like they were at the TOC, you know, you have like, you got that many good bowlers. You got 64 of the best in the world out there. Well, 63 and me uh, and the best of the best of the world out there. Uh, and then you know, everybody's, you know, doing, trying to do basically the same thing. That's why on those TV shows, if you paid attention to the TOC TV shows, you either saw guys playing straighter at like 9, 10, 11, 12, up the lane fast, like Marshall was or like Sterner was, or you saw guys banging on it further left like everybody else, you know, and there was really wasn't much in between. That's pretty much how you had to play that pattern. That pattern was so flat that you had to create shape and angle in the front and to go further left, or you had to play up the lane with something super strong and smooth uh, to be able to take away the hang. And that's why they use such strong balls is to take away the hang that's to the right, all that defined hold or that defined push, the oil that's at like five, six, seven out there. So um, this whole matching up thing is difficult. I talked about it a little bit with uh, my experience over the last couple of events that I bowled. I bowled pretty good and matched up pretty well at the T at the TOC PTQ. I had the right ball in my hand there and I was able to get enough points points enough uh i always say points when i'm messing around out there like even somebody bowls 250 or something like hey that's a lot of points good job guy <laughs> and uh but anyway so i got enough score out of it to make that cut but then i did couldn't figure out and i figured i'm seeing it now that i needed i needed um pin down stuff i needed something pinned down like marshall ken for the most part used a pin down um what was that nv tour and that just a little bit lower diff bowling ball with a smooth uh, cover and get it to be slow. You use that big third number to get them to be a little bit slower uh, to, to transition slow and make an arc instead of that quick motion. A lot of my stuff is that 45 by four and a half by 45 uh, pin distance and, and layout. So when it does see the friction, it kind of makes its stronger motion. They are pinned up. So they are going to make a little bit stronger motion off of the dry so that's where that four pin, 10 pin ball reaction comes from. You know, you, you see that four pin and it makes that quick kind of comes in a little bit high into the head pin, leave that four pin. And then you make a small move and it opens your angle up a little bit. And then it makes that quick motion, but it comes behind the head pin. And so it leaves that flat 10 or wrap 10. And, and that's kind of, you just know then four pin, 10 pin, not a good ball reaction. You need to find something that's a little bit more rounded. Um, and that's usually what it is. So when you folks are even in league, if you're looking and you're seeing and you're like, OK, I just left a four pin. Now I just made a move and I left a 10 pin. That doesn't mean you need necessarily a stronger ball. It means you need a slower transitioning ball, a ball that's going to come around the corner just a little bit slower because that slower bowling ball, we're looking for a foot of room. You know, we're not necessarily looking for room just left or right. Like if you have a board to the left and a board to the right that you can miss down lane, that's a ton of room. That's perfect. That's awesome. But you want that foot front to back, at least. If your ball hooks that foot sooner, it, it's the right ball that it's going to roll off of it nice and smooth and be high flush. If it hits that back part, if it rolls a foot later and it starts hooking a foot later than what you have, uh, it's it's a smooth enough ball that it comes behind the head pin and swishes a strike rather than flat tens or flat or wrap tens. That's what you're looking for. That's what you're trying to find. Um, so you get it a little bit left and maybe it hooks that foot sooner, but it's smooth enough bowling ball transitionally and it goes through the pins the right way. And then 
you know, if you're a little bit straighter up the lane and you get it going further down and it rolls around the, the head pin a little bit later, but it's a smooth enough bowling ball where it throws, you know, a messenger or something, or it is a, a light swish zone type of strike out there. So a lot of the times people are making the wrong type of moves. Like this past weekend, I did the wrong thing. I ended up missing a cut by a pin. I bowled 268 the last game because I finally told myself, okay, well, everything I think I know, I need to do the opposite apparently. And I kept leaving these, I kept having so much over under with my ball reaction, even when I grabbed a big smooth ball that I kept grabbing, I either grabbed like something like my ambush, which was early and smooth, or I took out like, uh, uh, what was the other one that I used a lot? The Widow 2.0 hybrid was one, and it was a little bit too quick. I needed something that was like in between those. And I was seeing my ball not go through the pins. So my instinct said, okay, I need something that's going to be a little quicker to go through the pins and I can just move left and let it go around it. And it wasn't working. Once I finally said, okay, well, what I thought wasn't working, I can try what I would think wouldn't work, like something weaker and smoother. I grabbed that NV tour and I just shut my angle down and it gave me that foot front to back that I was looking for. If I missed in a little bit, it just rolled off of it and it was high flush. If I missed out a little bit, it got a little bit for, I got that foot further down lane, but it came in and light swished and struck. So I had, you know, the weaker, less differential, less flaring type of ball. It still had the same layout as the other ball, but it was just the different cover stock, the different cover uh, and the different core that made the big difference there. So you've got to keep this type of stuff in mind when you're out there at any tournament. And I'm going to help you out here. I'm telling you, I've got something coming. This app that I'm, I've got being developed that is, it's going to be, it's going to be ridiculous. It's basically going to learn from you. You're going to be inputting all of these things into the app for yourself. It's going to have its own brain, basically. It's got AI in it. So it's going to uh, learn from everything that you're doing. So when you are registering your scores, when you're registering your moves and everything in here and taking your notes, essentially, it's going to learn your style and your game, your arsenal, everything you have. And it's going to tell you the moves. If you start to get lost and stuff, you can, you'll be able to click on the AI and it'll say, okay, well, you're using you know, this ball right now, this is what's happened the last few frames. You need to try to go to this and it's going to literally tell you what to do. Um, a lot of the AI has been tested over the last couple of weeks and stuff. And these guys were literally throwing shots. I'm saying literally a lot. I don't really know why, but they were throwing shots on sport conditions, plugging in the info. Here's the ball I'm using. Here's where I'm standing. Here's what I'm throwing. Here's what I'm leaving. What move should I make? It told them to make a specific move. And all of a sudden they've got three board, three bagger, four bagger, you know, based on good shots. So it's going to be, uh, it's going, and it's going to learn from your moves and stuff. So this is going to be a big deal. It's going to tell you, you know, the type, because you're going to be able to upload your entire arsenal. It's going to say, okay, here's the 17 balls I have with me. Here's the layouts on them. You know, this is what we've got. And it's going to be able to tell you what you need to do for the most part. Now, there's going to be a disclaimer there. You're not going to be able to hold us accountable for <laughs> if it doesn't work perfectly. It's just basically going to be there for a little bit of help. So if you end up losing money at a tournament or something, you know, way you're going to be able to, <laughs> we're not, we're not liable. <laughs> so, but it is going to give you that option. That's going to help you an awful lot in these situations. So uh, just keep that in mind when that app does become available, it's going to be pretty sick. I'm hoping uh, for the master's practice on Sunday, he has a little bit of a demo version that I can use and I can kind of show some people a little bit of what it's about uh, out there. If not by then, then it'll be for the US Open, or not the US Open, the, uh, the World Series hopefully. So um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to giving that app a try and getting it in play, but he is hoping that we have the website and everything done for that by the fall. So that way it'll be ready to go. And it'll be another thing that'll be just added tools to your bag to just make you that much better, you know? So just on top of like 10 pin doctors.com, you know, the stuff that we're going to have on there. So that's going to be, that's that 999 thing here um, that you can join that gives you access to so many different things here. 
Um, it's you, you get clinics. So any of the clinics that will be listed on there, I'm starting to upload some stuff. Now you'll see some stuff that's coming. If you want to go to any of those clinics, you're going to get 10% off your entry on all of that. If you're a member, um, same thing with, and you're going to get a free virtual clinic every single month. I'm going to be hosting a clinic to where basically we're going to get on a live. We're going to be inside the Bowling Center and, and I'll be able to demo some stuff and show you exactly what's going on. Different types of things. We'll be talking about footwork and um, arm swing and balance and all of that stuff, lane play, layouts, ball dynamics, all of it's going to be covered in these virtual clinics and stuff. So uh, you'll have not only access to a free one every month, but you'll have access to get 10% off of any of them that I run throughout the time that you're a member. And then also you'll be able to get into our forum where we're going to have everybody in there asking questions and we'll be answering questions and stuff. Um, and then I'm going to have a, an entire and there's an entire portion of the website that is specifically for members to where it's all videos, um, training videos, things to do some different drills and stuff like that, learning about different subjects of the game. You'll have access to all those videos as well. And then on top of that, all of the prize giveaways are going to be done through this membership as well. So all of the ball of choice winners, you're going to get it through this metal, through this website. Uh, every Bolify web uh, jersey that I give away, I've got 10 of them to give away. So you, uh, I've got another one that I'm going to do at the Masters this coming week. So uh, you're going to want to be a part of this membership. There's going to be a ball of choice and a Bolify jersey given away at the USBC Masters. So if you're not a part of this membership, you're going to want to be a part of the membership to have your chance to win. You win one ball, that pays your membership for the year and then some. So keep that in mind. And then having the ability to be able to see all of this stuff, it's going to be pretty neat. So just uh, will the app be available for non-members? Yes. The app itself, once the app comes out, it'll be uh, it'll be available to the public. You know, So you won't have to be a member. Um, but members will get specific areas of the app. There's going to be, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be paid areas on that app that are going to give you access to the big portions that you're going to want to be a part of. So, um, and there, it's going to be cheap. It's not going to be anything expensive, you know, so you don't have to worry about anything like that. But um, yeah, so mostly what's integrated, what I have on my 10pindoctors.com page will be integrated into the app as well. So it's all going to basically be merged in a way. So just be on the lookout for that. The 10pindoctors.com is basically the startup for what we have coming. It's one thing leading into the other, and it's going to just keep growing, and it's just going to keep being better. And it's basically going to be the area that uh, hopefully we can create such a name, such a reputation for making bowlers better, that this is just the place to be if you want to learn bowling and uh, if you just want to be in support of bowling. So Anyway, I guess uh, if you all got some questions, we'll take some questions now. If you haven't uh, already, make sure to hold, head over to 10pindoctors.com and sign up for that membership. Get yourself going, and then you'll be ready to go for the giveaway coming up for the Masters. So keep that, keep that in mind. Whew, all that talking, now I need a drink. You guys like my jug? It's my big water jug. It's pretty sweet. It's like 64 ounces. It's pretty awesome my way of getting all my water in for the day. And let me just scroll up here a little bit. Uh, somewhere I need to make a, this is the pro shop in Waterford. I need to get a good six ball arsenal. I've been making changes, adjusting my game from returning. Okay. We can do that. PD Mac for sure. We'll get you taken care of. Not a problem. It's funny. You mentioned the shots they put out. I feel like it's been forever since I've seen badger. Yeah. They don't use badger anymore. Like where the guys are backing it up 20. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I was getting at. Most of the patterns are basically uh, the same thing, same types of shapes. So even if they're 41, 42 foot, you know, it just requires you to play a different part of the lane, but it's the same type of shape on the lane that you're trying to create for the most part. So there's not much variance there, at least from what I've seen. How often do you move your feet forward and back when the bag doesn't have the right tool to get early or late break? The only thing moving your feet forward and back does for most people is either slows your feet down or speeds them up, which then is what your adjustment is for, you know, ball speed. So. What does my vision focus on? I don't know what you mean. I'm not sure what you mean by that. 
What do you think of my lineup? A hybrid 2.0, 3D offset attack. Scorpion Sting. You need something. I mean, if you're actually trying to build an arsenal, those are an awful lot of pearl bowling balls, or at least shiny bowling balls. You need to get something duller in there. And if you don't want something too strong, go with like an Envy Tour, since you're in the hammer line. If I track over my fingers, what can be done? I'm a right-hander. Do you track over your fingers? Do you use your thumb? That's important. There's a lot of people that don't use their thumb. Uh, they track over their fingers because their ball's laid out improperly. It doesn't flare properly. And then the finger pitches can be a big deal too. So it depends on a lot of different things. I would have to see it. But a lot of times you can just make a slight finger change and get your ball roll to change just a little bit. How often would you bake your bowling ball to extract the oil out of it? Uh, I mean, after the first time you do it, I mean, you're, you are softening the cover even that much more by heating it up like that. So I don't know that I would be doing it more than once. Um, as long as you're doing it the proper way with like, a you know, an actual one of the innovative oil extractors. If don't do it with your own oven, they get too hot. Do I believe the PBA should use different lane machines patterns to avoid similar breakdown you guys see week to week? I think um, I don't know the truth about it. I think Brunswick pays a pretty penny to have their machines used and to be the basically the sponsor of that. Um, so I don't think uh, I think they're getting the success that they want. And so I don't think they have a reason to really change the patterns or anything. You know, uh, they're getting the guys that they want on TV. Not that, you know, they're getting the, the, the guys that they're getting on TV are the more or less the exciting guys, the ones that people want to watch. So if I'm Tom Clark, I'm probably not changing a thing because those are the guys that I would want on TV, you know, with the exception of me. Like, I would want me on TV. I would be pretty entertaining. I'd be yelling out, fruit salad <laughs> after shot. <laughs> that would be funny. Ah, there you go. Okay. Does your vision look at marks or the pins for spares? For spares, I just look at the arrows. And honestly, I'm not even really drawing lines or anything. I just know where to line up to shoot certain spares and I just fire it. So, but as far as like, you know, my first shot, um, you know, sometimes I'll look at the dots. Sometimes I'll look at the arrows. Sometimes I'll look in between. It just depends on what I'm trying to accomplish. Is there a downfall to using dual angle instead of the two LS for no thumb bowler? No, I don't think so. I use dual angle on every bowler. It doesn't matter if they're two finger or not. I just use the, because it's all based off their PAP from the center of their bridge of those two fingers. So as long as you're doing it based on that, you know, and it really depends on the bowler itself too. So there's certain layouts that won't work as well for some two handers versus others. I'd like to know more about pin up versus pin down layout. Since a lot of videos out there say pin down flares less. In what situation would you rather use a pin down layout? Well, the flare all comes from the pin distance, not really the pin location so much. Uh, pin distance is what's going to cause most of your flare. Pin up, pin up. Most people misconstrue and they say, they try to tell you that pin up is going to be longer and stronger down lane and pin down is going to be earlier and smoother. Um, and that's just not the case. Pin up just means that the ball is going to respond faster to friction. So a lot of times, if you're on a high friction center, a pin up ball is going to be the bad option. It's about how much that core transitions as it's rolling down the lane. The pin down bowling balls, the core is going to, it's going to transition and get into its roll phase a little bit later um, or a little bit slower, I should say, and give you the illusion that the ball is actually smoother and earlier. So a lot of the times you can make a pin down ball flippier because you can make it store energy more through a lot of friction in the front. So a lot of times a pin down ball is going to look like it's stronger down lane. Uh, and that, you know, a lot of times you'll see PBA guys go to pin down balls once they get far enough left because they're trying to smooth out all the friction in the front. So you just got to keep that stuff in mind. All right. Well, it is 1.30. So I have to roll out. Uh, I got some stuff to do. I got to run to the distributor, grab some bowling balls, and drill some balls for some people tonight. So make sure to hit that uh, link in the description there that 
www.10pindoctors.com. Join that membership. I'm going to add the annual membership on there. That'll be $99 for the year rather than the, whatever it comes out to, like 118 or something for the if you were to pay $9.99 a month. So I'm out of here. Make sure to join, hit the like button, all that good stuff, and we'll see you guys um, in when will I see you? I'll probably have another video up for you tomorrow at some point. I'm just not sure what it's going to be. So I don't know. Stay tuned for that. Go watch the matching up video. I had a little bit more info in that as well too. So we'll see you guys later.